Are MMOs bad for you? The MMORPG genre certainly attracts some weird and wonderful people from yeah, many different backgrounds, but generally MMOs have been more associated with nerd culture than other gaming genres over the past 20 years. I remember back in high school, all the kids that played RuneScape would hang out together, and all the kids that played WoW would also hang out together. These We didn't have that at all, what the fuck? Bro, like, there were like four people in the whole school that played WoW, and, and like... I would talk to them about it, like, sometimes, but, like, not really. These groups were seen as the nerds, whilst all the cool kids were playing Halo 3 or Call of Duty. I remember seeing documentaries yeah. on TV about how addictive World of Warcraft was, and hearing stories about people becoming so obsessed with the game that they died from playing it too long, mm -hmm. or they'd pee in bottles yeah, that... to avoid going to the top. That means the game is good. That absolutely means the game is good, 100%. If you have a game that's making people ruin their life over it, then instantaneously, that's a great game. Spoiler, just so that's they could keep Fortnite playing the game. Man, bathroom. Naturally, after hearing these fierce stories in the news as a teenager, it just made me think, this game must be really fucking good if it's having that effect on people. Exactly. That's it. That is the best advertising. Kids are ruining their lives over this. Okay, well, what is it? And thus, my journey down the MMO rabbit hole began. 18 years later, here I am covering MMORPGs yeah. for a living. I've gone through multiple phases where MMOs have either had a severely negative impact on my life and an incredibly positive impact. There it is. All so right. in this video, we're going to talk about both the good and the bad about being an MMORPG player, ultimately ending in my opinion about the title of this video. Are MMORPGs actually bad for you? But for They can be. First sponsor. Many MMO players find it easier to level up in-game rather than real life, but with a pair of Raycon everyday earbuds, you can start to build good habits with the assistance of top-tier audio quality to ease your mind and improve focus. Like AirPods? You've got a six-hour train journey across the country and need to keep your mind occupied? Listen to some podcasts with your Raycons. You want to level up your stamina stats IRL but you find cardio boring? Whip out your Raycons, put on some tunes, and get running. I and never felt cardio was boring. Because I was constantly fucking stressed out and tired. I I've never felt like it was boring. For me personally, I use my Raycons in the gym pretty much every day to avoid some of the terrible music that gets played on repeat, which would distract me from gaining that sweet, sweet strength XP. So why should you use Raycons over other wireless earbuds? Well, they're half the price of other brands with premium quality, they come with noise isolation, they're water and sweat resistant which makes them perfect for workouts, long battery life that will have you covered all day, three customizable sound profiles, earbud tap functionality, crystal clear cool quality, and I'm recommending them which means they must be good. <laughs> so if you're ready to buy something small with a big impact, then click the link in the description below or go to buyraycon.com. That's a pretty good ad. I like that. He just goes all out with it. Yep, he's like, well, how do you know it's good? Well, I mean, I say it's good, so I mean, shit. TLP to get 15% off your Raycon yep. purchase. Smart. Buy yourself some Raycons now. So what are some of the negative effects of playing MMORPGs? I think the biggest and most obvious thing is addiction. Most of the problems related to MMOs come down to just putting too much time and energy into these games. Oh, yeah, and every sub-issue I'm about to mention, such as poor social skills, bad hygiene, unhealthy lifestyle, fucked up priorities, and damaging your- Yeah, like, I did this before... I, I, I did this before I was even... A, a, like a MMORPG gamer. Like, I was ruining my life over video games whenever I was like six and seven years old. So it's really kind of like a personal problem. This doesn't really have a lot to do with the game. It's just the game is how I do it. Your relationships is ultimately down to addiction or lack of self-control in one way or another. The easy response to this is just play MMOs casually, yeah. lol. Yeah, easier said than done. It's and always easier said than done, but it's actually the right answer. It's the same as a lot of people. Oh, I'm not in shape. Just go to the gym and eat better food. Easier said than done.
Very true. But that's what has to happen. There's a lot of things it's easier said than done, but that still means it's the right option. MMOs by design are made in a way so that to achieve anything meaningful in game, you need to put in a crap ton of time and energy into them. Sure, you can play extent. MMOs casually and have a decent enough time with average progress, but if the game's yeah. really good, the sense of progression is spiking your dopamine in all the right ways, and you're in that MMO flow state, it's extremely easy to fall down the slippery slope of addiction. Oh, Especially yeah. for people who aren't getting any sense of fulfillment in their real life. Well, I think that's what MMOs are really the most compelling for, are people that don't really have a lot going for them IRL, so they're able to play an MMO and they're in a different environment. And I think that's why pay-to-win MMOs are seen as so bad, and that's why pay-to-win in video games is seen as so bad. It's because a lot of people look at video games as their escape from real life being pay-to-win. They're looking at video games as the place that they can go to and be put on an even playing field with other people. So absolutely. Like, I, I think this is 100% what's going to happen. And they go to a game, they play the game, and they're able to accomplish something in the game that they can in real life. However, I think this is a very limited perspective. And as, as I've gotten older, I've realized that. Because a lot of my friends that don't play MMOs as seriously as they used to, they don't, they're not, it's not that they aren't good because they don't play the game. Like, some of these guys were in, like, top 10 world guilds. They just have a wife and kids now, and they're busy. So you have like some 16 or some 21 year old that thinks that they're better than these guys. Not really. You just don't have anything else to do. So, and it's, and also like, it's not really a bad thing, but whenever you get older, you realize that that sense of accomplishment that you had is very circumstantial. And in the same way that you might not have money to pay for things in real life, they don't have time to pay for things in game. So at the end of the day, like both of these places are like there. It's not really an equal playing field, is it? Whenever one person can invest 10 hours and the other person can invest one hour. I know this might not be a popular opinion to have, but I think it's really true and it's not talked about enough. Most people that stop playing games super competitively don't stop because they just suddenly get bad at the game. They stop because they want to move on with their life. If you have a boring, stressful life and the only dopamine you're getting comes from video games, yeah. then well, that's the thing, right? Is like, sorry, let me pause again. But like, if you're 17 years old, you're a fucking loser. You've probably never accomplished anything of any value. Nobody respects you. You probably don't have any money. Sometimes your dad lets you use the car on the weekends. You don't own a house. You don't have a, a nice car. You don't have a fucking Ferrari. You don't have anything. You have to ask to go to use the bathroom. Okay? So guess what? You go in a video game, and now you're on the same playing field as everybody else. Now, those same fucking people that are the same age as your teacher, you're killing them in Warsong Gulch. And it feels fucking good. Absolutely. And that is where MMOs and video games really provide value. And there are people that get lost in the sauce. They get it twisted. But I do think for someone like me, I got a lot out of that. To be able to finally be put on, at least in my mind back then, an even playing field with other people and be able to succeed inside of that playing field because I was given the same tools as everybody else was and I, I was given a fair chance. It doesn't matter how tall you are, how short you are, how much money your parents make, what color your skin is. If you're a girl or a guy, at least for the most part in that case, uh, some weirdos online, of course. But for the most part, everybody's the same. It's a beautiful thing that gaming provides. Naturally, it's much easier to become addicted because you're not getting that good feeling from anything else. Eventually, once you're deep enough into an MMO, you might join a guild that pushes progression yeah. raiding or competitive PvP. Oh, yep, and here you're basically signing up to play the game for a minimum amount of hours per week. Because hours. it's what the guild expects from you to keep up My with the gearing requirements. Five days a week. Not all MMOs are like this. Guild Wars 2 is right a good example of an MMO with no gear treadmill that you can jump in and out of whenever you like yeah. and not really get addicted. But for most MMOs, especially at launch or during a new expansion, they're extremely addictive. Every they're, they're, well, they're, they're, keep in mind, they're also addictive because they're fun.
This is the same as like, remember watching Game of Thrones seasons like one through four? That was addictive. Why? Because it was good. Things new and exciting. You've got thousands of other players all pushing progression and leveling together. And you almost feel this push to race against them or at the very least keep up. Yeah. Why do you feel this push? Because I think a lot of the people that play MMOs are guys and guys are fucking competitive like that. That's why. It's a fucking truth. Absolutely. Like, how many of you guys, the exact fucking same, and like, how many people in your guild, most of the people in the guild, it's all dudes, they're all dick measuring, and that's all it is. Who's doing more DPS? I'm doing, yeah, but he got the buff, I didn't get, oh, I got bad RNG, it wasn't, like, it's, all, it's just how it is, it's a bunch of young, competitive guys that are looking to prove themselves. No fucking shit you're trying to keep up with them. Absolutely. And yeah, there's girls out there, and some of them are like that, but for the majority of these people, it is fucking young dudes. Young dudes with something to prove. Well, if you fall behind, there's that fear that you won't be able to fight groups or do the content that you want to do. True. That, as well as wanting to feel like you're a part of something, which is another feeling that a lot of MMO players lack in their real life. Because, again, they're losers. And that's what happened. I used to be a loser. I'm still a loser in a lot of ways. But the truth is that, like, yeah, like, a lot of people don't have a big friend group. They don't have a lot of people that know them in real life. They're not respected by their peers. They're just... A guy, right? They're a. They do data entry for AT and T, but bro, they can come home and they're like a guild master. People are listening to them. They're making decisions. The decisions matter. Like, yeah, absolutely, people care about that. So, what's the problem with being an MMO addict? If you're having fun, then it's, it's the same problem with any other addict. Not all that harmful, right? Well, that depends. Last year when Lost Ark first launched, I got so addicted to that game, I literally could not sleep. Yeah, yeah. but like, did you get the fucking the gold horse though? Because I did. I got the gold horse. I don't want anybody to tell me that they got addicted to Lost Ark, they don't have the gold horse. Yes, I was having fun, but I didn't I want- put a, I put over a thousand hours into Lost Ark in like the first three or four months of the game. It was fucking great, I had so much fun. Wait, what happened? What happened to the fucking sound? What the fuck? Um... Can you guys hear me? Yes? Okay. I don't understand why this is happening. This is actually, this is really confusing me. Test. Okay, so I'm getting the feedback from my microphone, the monitoring from my microphone. Okay, let's try it again. Ah, uh, okay. I, I uh, all right. I don't know why that happened. Right. Well, that depends. Last year when Lost Ark first launched, I got so addicted to that game, I literally could not sleep. Yeah. We're gonna play Lost Ark pretty soon again. Uh, I saw there's a new patch coming out, Bro Shaza Hard Mode's gonna come out. We gotta get Light of Salvation 30. A lot of work.
Yes, I was having fun, but I didn't want to make YouTube content because I wanted to play Lost Ark. I didn't want to go to the gym, meet my friends, leave the house, give my girlfriend attention, smart, smart, or do anything smart, else yeah. other than play Lost Ark. And I when I did why. leave the house, my eyes were bloodshot red from looking at the screen all day. Yeah. This has been the case with me in the past with so many But like, wasn't that great though? Because I think that it's, I think that it's great to occasionally indulge in absolute degeneracy. I, I feel like y you should do that every once in a while. Just to stay in, in touch with that version of yourself. Different Feels MMOs, good, yeah. RuneScape, WoW, Black Desert Online, New World, Lost Ark, Arcage, and so on. Whenever I've been addicted to an MMO, I've always been fully aware that this isn't healthy, but at the time, I never seemed to care. It's easy to care more about what's going on in this parallel virtual life than what- I feel like I don't even really give a shit about whether it's unhealthy or not. Is it fun? Am I having fun right now? Yes? Oh, well, that, that's, what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. What's going on in the real world, which occasionally can be a good crutch if you're going through some hard times. Sometimes though, addiction isn't really that tied to fun or enjoyment. You can be addicted to a game that you no longer enjoy, purely because you've invested so much time into it in the past. Yeah. This is quite a depressing state to be in, because you're putting time into something but getting no enjoyment back. You're chasing the dopamine hits that got you into the MMO in the first place, but those rewards just don't feel the same. It's a I think that's the case with a lot of people, and that's always how it is, right? is that you just keep trying to chase that feeling that you had and this happens with every game right you'll have a like you'll have a bad game like whenever i would play apex or like PUBG or fortnite or any br i wouldn't want to end on a bad game but then whenever i had a good game i wouldn't want to end now because i just had a good game so like what does that mean that means i'm up till 7 a.m this point where you should probably take a break or make better use of your time Another common issue that MMO addicts generally face is poor social skills in real life. If you're spending all your time typing or talking to people online and not face to face, then you might not be very good at reading body language or have experience in certain social situations. This I can see some people, uh, like this is definitely true, but it can also be not true. Like, whenever I, like, I'm trying to think of a way to put this, I think that being online a lot has given me a lot of tools and experience with dealing with super uncomfortable, awkward situations with like no stress. You know, it's like, okay, so uh, basically your online girlfriend sent nudes to a guy in the guild, but he didn't really like her. So he gave her the phone number of another guy in the guild and she sent to nudes to that guy. And then that guy is like talking to the other guy. Okay. Um, yeah. The, all right. Let's, okay. Let, let's deal with this. It's not really, it's just not, it, you know, this is just Tuesday. It's not a big deal, but like for a normal person, this would be very, they'd be like, Wait, what the fuck? What's this? Whoa. Oh my God. Right? So, like, b being on the internet, it does give you a unique capacity to deal with absolutely insane problems. Oddly specific. Yeah, because it happened. This was a problem I had back in high school. I chose to play WoW and RuneScape over going to parties and meeting up with friends after school. This yeah. caused me to be very socially- I, I hated go- I hated whenever my, my- my friends were young enough to like always want to go out and fucking go to these like raves and parties and shit. I always hated going out to that stuff. I've never gone to a club and enjoyed myself. Okay, you guys remember, I, I- I grew up in Austin. Austin's a major fucking party city. It's a fucking college town. I've, I've had to go out many, many times to 6th Street, which is like the main party area here, to the Domain, to Rainy Street, to fucking one of these parties at somebody's house. I fucking hate it. I never like being there. Ugh. Awkward in my late teens. I didn't really know Not how to talk me. to girls. I had no confidence. And I didn't want to leave my safe online space. Yeah. This was compounded by the God next negative right. aspect of being an MMO addict. 
the unhealthy lifestyle. There it is. When you're addicted to MMOs, the last thing you want to do is spend time away from the computer preparing healthy meals, working out at the gym, exercising, yeah. getting eight hours of sleep, and seeing some light. This I do think this part is true. Have you guys ever had the internet go out for an hour at your house and you did a month's work of work? A month's worth of work in one hour? Like, you just immediately went down and you just, like, cleaned up the house. You made, like, five phone calls. You dealt with, like, five problems. Internet comes back on and you're like, okay, you know, let's go. Oh, wait, never mind. Okay, yeah. So what's on Twitter again? Yeah, it happened all the time. Like, I remember one time our internet went down and I was, like, I walked down to the store and there were a bunch of people. It was like that one Bruce Willis movie at the end of the movie where people finally walked out of their fucking containment chambers for the first time and saw the sun. And there were a bunch of people that just walked out and they were just standing in the fucking sidewalk on the street. <laughs> Surrogates, yeah. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> hey! <laughs> you too, huh? This will obviously have a negative impact on your IRL character and perpetuate your self-confidence and social issues due to probably looking and feeling like shit all of the time. And this brings me to my final point, messed up priorities. Like a character in an RPG has mana or stamina, we all have a limited amount of willpower available to use each day in real life. Once that willpower is used up, you're done for the day. If you're addicted to MMOs, you're potentially using up all of your energy on a game that probably doesn't bring you a whole lot of happiness and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're unhappy with your current situation in life. You're yeah, but then you just don't think about it. Problem solved. Oh, I don't like how things are going. Well, just don't think about it. It is, it is what it is. Well, I'm, I, I feel unhappy because I'm not, uh, you know, like I'm not taller. Well, it is what it is. I'm balding. It is what it is. Well, there it is. Job, your physical appearance. Yeah, your... I also want to let you all know one thing. Everybody always goes, they tell you. Don't ignore your problems. They won't go away. Uh-uh. That's a lie. You ignore plenty of problems. A lot of them will go away. I had a friend... He got an arrest warrant sent to my house. I called him. I'm like, what do you want me to do? He says, throw it away. Nothing ever happened. <laughs> Nothing ever happened. <laughs> Just fucking went over there. Yep, no issue. Relationships yep. to the country you live in. Themselves. You want to make a change, but you're using all your mental energy on a bullshit game that you no longer enjoy, that you'll have forgotten about in two years anyway. Mm -hmm. To summarize the negative aspects of MMOs, they're basically insanely addictive because they're able to give you a budget version of all the positive emotions you'd experience in real life. Being part of a group, feeling powerful, yeah. achieving goals, competing against other people, problem solving, and a long-term sense of progression where you quickly see the fruits of your hard work. Yeah. With self-control, these aren't bad. Well, I think also the reason why MMOs are so compelling is because they have a direct reward. Uh, a, a direct reward structure and that's what makes them good and like for example you can work hard at your job and sometimes you get fucked over you just get fired but like if you work hard at farming a reputation you're gonna hit exalted every single time so it, it gives people an actual way to achieve goals without there being a lot of noise and rng to it yeah, fake sense of accomplishment. Oh, yes, of course it's a fake sense of accomplishment. But it doesn't always have to be. Why doesn't real life have this sort of progression and achievement, and I wish it did? Well, it does. Like, you have a lot of this real life progression and achievement. But the difference is that real life progression and achievement is usually harder. It requires more time and effort and work. And also, it's more RNG. There are times where you can work hard, and somebody else works hard, and... They get it, and you don't. That's what happens. Things, and it's why MMOs are so compelling. But it's when you let MMOs take away your desire to achieve those emotions and experiences in real life, 
that's when things can go downhill. This is basically what happened with me from 2017 to 2018 when I let Black Desert Online take over my life. I remember that. I remember watching his videos about this. And I remember whenever he made his video, he was quitting the game. No, I remember this actually so well. I, I, I had absolutely no desire to make friends IRL because I had my... It was so good, though. Like, that's the thing. It's like, it was so fucking fun on release, man. Oh, my God. Like, I don't regret wasting my life on this game at all. I had so much fucking fun. It was great. Guildmates in BDO. I weighed 105 yeah. kilograms due to not working out and eating a gamer diet. Is and I didn't feel any urge to progress or make money because I was so focused on my progression in-game. Eventually, though, things changed, mm -hmm. which brings me on to the next part of this video, why I think MMOs can be quite good for you. First off, MMORPGs actually teach you a lot of skills that can be applied to the real world. Here's just a few examples. Guild leaders and raid leaders practice management skills, organizational skills, as well as staying calm under pressure. Learning how to flip- Oh, this is definitely true. You've got to deal with a lot of people problems. Uh, absolutely, but there are some examples that you can use, like in, in MMOs. Like one way, one example is that whenever I would have issues between two people, the way I would solve a lot of them is I would tell the people that I was going to deal with it, and then I wouldn't deal with it. And nine out of ten times, the problem would go away. It actually worked all, all, pretty much all the time. Now, occasionally things would blow up, but every once in a while, or every once in a while it would be bad, but most of the time, this was like super fucking effective. Items on the auction house not only teaches you how supply and demand oh, works, but it also teaches you to look for niches in markets. There it is. I learned to be extra careful about trusting people on the internet and avoid scams yeah, after I got lured into the RuneScape wilderness for my entire you bank at the age friend. of 12 years old. If you're a top tier raider, you're learning how to follow complex instructions, work together with other people, and solve problems. Many people who aren't native English speakers have basically taught themselves an entire language from playing MMOs. And many people have formed lasting relationships in real life with people that they've met in these games. Oh, he just lost. That's an eight ball in the corner. That's a fuck up. But, you know, it is what it is. No, it's true. Like, I've met friends of mine and, uh, you know, in video games online. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I've had a relationship with them. I've talked to them for a long time, man. Absolutely. It's a positive thing. It's like, I think getting scammed on the internet's good for you. You know, because it's like... You either get scammed on the internet, or you get older and you buy an NFT. Which one's worse? But here's the best part. If you change your mindset to imagine that real life is an MMORPG, not only does it help you make better decisions, but it also helps you figure out what you want to get out of life. If real life had a user interface and you could see all of your stats, yeah. what would they be? If you could see yourself getting XP in real time and leveling up your skills, would that be more motivating to you? Every no. time you go to the gym, you're gaining a strength level. Every time you stick to a good habit, you're leveling up your discipline skill. No. The more people you talk to, you're leveling up your charisma. No. And as you're leveling up your IRL stats more and more, you unlock new quests that allow you to access new content. Perhaps traveling to new zones. Perhaps you unlock the girlfriend expansion. Ah. Or you gain new abilities. There are so many daily quests with that one. Oh my god. It's like every, like, there's like 25 daily quests, 10 extra daily quests for that one. Oh, I played that one before. Ooh. Oh my god. Did it happen again? What's wrong with my sound today? I wonder why this is happening. This is really weird. I've never had it happen and, and be this problematic. Yeah, this is super fucked. I hope it works.
access new content, perhaps traveling to new zones, perhaps you unlock the girlfriend expansion, or you gain new abilities in the form of speaking new languages, snowboarding, mountain climbing, wilderness survival, and so on. This probably sounds ridiculous, but since I've adopted this mindset, my life has improved in so many different ways. You can literally open up Google Maps and ask yourself, if I was an avatar in a video game, what would be the best zone for me to live in? I don't think Ohio is a good option right now. Up in. This is why I decided to move to Thailand over three years ago. There's less open world PvP here than most other zones. Okay. The guild that runs this zone takes less of my money in taxes. Items at the general store are cheaper. Yeah. And the weather is nice, which means I have less mental health debuffs throughout the year. MMO yeah, but like the thing is, for me, like this is... Like, it, it, the reason I'm in Austin is, like, all my friends are on this server. Yeah, like, all my friends, like, that's why I stay on Kel'Thuzad. That's where all the boys is at. Yeah, of course. Texas is no income tax? I mean, if it did, I'd still fucking be here. Like, let's be honest. Not like, I'm gonna leave where I live. Fuck, man. MMO players are probably the smartest, most dedicated, and slightly autistic group of gamers out there. Yeah. When a new MMO's <laughs> coming out, they theory craft, speculate, invest time researching and planning out the optimal leveling routes before a game has even released, so that upon launch they achieve their goals as efficiently as possible. Yep. Can you imagine how powerful applying that same level of planning and efficiency would be to the real life MMORPG? Oh yeah, it is. Because the thing is that most people, whenever they go and do something in real life, they're not very good at it. They don't really think ahead. They don't know a lot about the situation. They don't understand like previous circumstances that are similar and how to work against them or how to work with them in mind. They're just not very good at making decisions. So if you spend all your time theory crafting and figuring out how to make something work, and then you do that in real life, you will probably be very successful. There is a lot of IRL is RNG. Everything is RNG. Item drops are RNG. But if you farm a raid, you'll get the raid items, okay? You might not get them on your first run through. But if you spend all tier running that raid, you're going to get the fucking gear. That's what happens, man. Whenever you're born is RNG. There's a lot of things that are RNG. But if, you've, if you have the internet, you have control over your life to a large extent. Literally, if you're unhappy with your situation, open up a notepad file and pretend that life is an MMO. What are your stats? Where are you questing? What type of content do you want to do when you reach in? I think that's actually very insightful to say that. That's really smart. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a good thing. I, I like that. Game. Write down the different types of quests, features, content, and expansions that might unlock once you hit certain stat requirements. The problem with the real-life MMO, though, is that you have a lot of resources to manage. It's basically an open-world, hardcore survival sandbox MMO, crossed with The Sims That's where Portland. you need to do a lot of character maintenance to regenerate your willpower and energy resources. Oh, and you can't max out every stat either, yeah. which means you need to be quite selective about how you spend your actual- Oh, was, he should have had a picture of Johnny Sense. Tribute points. Another thing that kind of sucks about the real life MMO mm -hmm. is that it's pretty pay to win. It sure you can is. only unlock new mounts with gold and not via random drop. And if you're unlucky enough to start in one of the game's hardcore full loot PvP zones with bad starting attributes, yeah. then you're going to have a much longer grind to reach the end game. True. So are MMORPGs actually bad for you? They can be. That depends. Yeah. If you're someone that will prioritize your in-game avatar's progress over your real-life avatar's progress, then yes, potentially. Otherwise, no, not really. MMOs can teach you a lot about real life, and I've met tons of extremely successful people who grew up playing games like RuneScape, WoW, Ultima Online, EverQuest, and so on. Level up both your IRL and in-game characters at the same time for maximum dopamine rewards, and to also min-max your happiness levels. But that's it for this video guys, as always let me know in the comments below if this was a dog shit video that made absolutely no sense, or perhaps you agree with me in thinking that viewing real life like an MMORPG has some actual value. I think there's a lot of people who do get a lot of value by looking at MMO 
uh, MMOs like they are, or sorry, real life like it's an MMO. If you yeah, want I've to follow my IRL character's progress towards achieving his goal of getting 99 strength, then join my Discord Gamer to Giga Chad linked below, where I post pictures every two days after a strength XP grinding session. <laughs> I'm currently three months into this grind and have been pretty consistent. At this rate, I should achieve the six pack abs cosmetic unlock in about two to three months. Right. Social media on screen, help us Impressive. out with a like for the algorithm gods. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a good video. I'm glad that I watched it. I think it's pretty well put together. And uh, honestly, I, I like videos like this, especially whenever they look at things that are seen negatively in a positive light. I think that's something that's very healthy for people. And uh, yeah, guys, Larius, yeah, it's a great video. I'm going to link it for you guys. The way that I, I live, as I said before, um, I uh, I live like a complete degenerate. And if there's something that I want... I go and I take it. I get it, and that's it. But if I don't want it, I don't care. And I, I think that it's important to know yourself. And whenever you're thinking about achieving different things, think about, is this something I want? Or is this something that people want me to want? And I think that's very important to keep in mind. A lot of people do things and they invest their life into something that they don't want to do, that doesn't give them fulfillment, but it's what they're supposed to do. Why? Yeah, that's what I think. Social programming. Exactly, man. Yeah, it's difficult to, uh, it, it's hard to, to, to be different. No, it is. It, it's, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to be different. But um, it's also hard to be the same, too, because you have to constantly do what other people tell you. But like being alive and, and existing in society can sometimes just be hard in itself. And you either fucking stand up to it and you do what you want or you go along with it. And either way, as long as you're happy, that's what matters. People always they, they everybody always has a fucking uh, like a five step program. Uh, you know, I solved my life's problem with this one easy step. There's really not a lot of easy steps. It depends on every single different person. But for me, I, uh, I try to be honest with myself. I try to ask myself, what do I really want? And then once I realize what that is, I go and I get it. And that's it. Do you have a problem when your mouse starts double clicking? Yeah, you get a new one. I've had that for sure. Well, what's this here? I'll read a few more of these. Or just give up and disconnect? Well, yeah, it's fine, as long as you're happy. Uh, that's it. And you just have to get started? Yeah. What's this here? And uh, what do you want then? Uh, I don't know. Most of the time, I don't even really know what I want. Sometimes I will work towards things unconsciously. And whenever I go into an extremely stressful situation, I just trust myself that I will be able to navigate it in the right way. That when the time comes, I will be ready. And I don't worry about it because I know that I'm probably going to come out on top. I'm going to win. And if I don't, it is what it is. But usually I do. So, yeah, I, I try not to worry. Anything's wrong in life you haven't done yet? Yeah, there's a number of things that I'd like to do and uh, things that I'd like to achieve, etc. But uh, to be honest, uh, growing up, like I've. I, I never really wanted anything. I just wanted to hang out with the boys, do what I want, play video games, make my videos, and I'm doing that. Uh, I'm happy. It's good. You shouldn't give advice on life, dude. Oh, I think I absolutely should. I do what I want every single day. You're in my chat watching something that you don't want to hear. Think about that. Yeah. How about climbing Mount Everest? No, I don't care about that, stupid. I, I don't care. If somebody else wants to do it, that's nice for them. But uh, no, I, I don't want to do that. It's not for me. I mean, if somebody else wants to, it's great. I'm not, I, I don't mean to say it's stupid. I, I think it's stupid, but like somebody else doesn't, then it's up to them. It's their own prerogative. I'll read a few comments and then we'll uh, move on. Actually, I'll read some of these comments. So I want to say thanks to this video. Coming back from Thailand on vacation three months ago. Lost motivation to go to the gym. 
I was using my vocation as motivation, uh, motivation for past six months. Now I should have structured my priorities differently. Here's one bit of advice that I've learned myself is that there will never be a perfect time to start exercising and working out. There will always be something that will come up that will get in the way. The truth is that if you want to make time to work out and exercise, you will do it. And if you don't want to do it, you won't do it. Yes, obviously, there might be certain days where you're not able to do it. But in terms of a long-term uh, responsibility that's preventing you from being able to exercise, that's probably not true. And you should be honest with yourself. Because again, I think that the one person who you should never lie to under any circumstance is yourself. Never lie to yourself. Because the moment that you start lying to yourself is the moment you start living in delusion. This is the moment where now you are completely basing your decisions and doing everything off of an idea that you know to not be true. And you don't want to have that dissonance in your own fucking mind. It, it, it's so stressful to do that. Yeah, never lie to yourself, says the millionaire. Oh, yeah. You could say it, say whatever you want. You, you, you can discount my advice, and it's, it's society's fault why you're a loser. And you, maybe you're right. You're totally right. It's society's fault, and everybody's out to get you, and the system is going to hold you down. And you know what? Nobody gives a fuck because you don't really matter to anybody else except for yourself. So you want to spend all your fucking time talking about how all oh, things are bad for me. It's not fair. Okay, who cares? Who gives a shit about you? Bro, you either you, you, you go out and you take what you want. Nobody's going to come and give it to you. And that's it. So I, yeah, you don't you don't like you're not gonna make an excuse like somebody not gonna go and make an excuse to me where I'm like oh yeah you're right like totally like for sure yeah it it's nuts man yeah want to invest in crypto go for it yeah hell yeah and there's people that invest in crypto and they make good money from it I might not believe in it it might not be for me but if you want to do it <laughs> fucking you better pay attention to those goddamn charts. What's this here? Uh, there's a way, and it's a very uncomfortable way. You just got to do what you got to do. Absolutely, man. How do you find out what you want? Um, how do I find out what I want? The way that I find out what I want is I stop wanting things. This might sound counterintuitive, but... I stop trying to work towards something and I just simply exist and then I think about where I want to go. I, I've never been asked this. This is probably not a very good way for me to explain it, right? Like I, I've never like I've never really sat down and thought about this a lot. But yeah, I, I feel like a lot of times like I, I will move towards something after a period of doing nothing. So I will do nothing for a while. And then with no goals, every day I wake up, it's exactly the same. I'm happy. And then one day I decide, you know what? I'm going to go in this direction instead. And then I just do it. So, yeah, I, I, I try not to uh, attach myself to the outcome of things a whole lot. And I try to only focus on what I want to focus on. And I think sometimes the best way to do that is to just cut out anything else that you're supposed to do. This is terrible advice. Then don't do it. Yeah, then then don't do it. Uh, I mean, wh wh what do you want me to say? Yeah, I mean, shit, if, if you don't... The thing is, like, I, I, I am very much an advocate of... No advice is good for everybody. There's there's never going to be a person who is going to have a message that will resonate with every single person. So if, if, if you're listening to what I'm saying and you think that I'm wrong, then don't do it. This is just what I do. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say. 
I'll, I'll read a few comments here. Except crypto, crypto's good. Okay, then invest in it. Put put your money in it. Absolutely. Uh, I know that there are um, there's a lot of people that are into that kind of stuff, and the thing is that there will be people that will make money in crypto in the year 2025. And if you have enough knowledge about this topic, you could be one of those people. But you've got it. You've got to put a lot of work into it. And the more you know, I think this is like. I've always felt like the more that you know about a situation, the higher your chance of being able to succeed in it is. Right? It's like what I said earlier about how if you know everything before you go into something, you can effectively predict the future. Uh, people think it's uh, technical knowledge instead of insider knowledge, though. Well, it depends. I mean, like, uh, obviously cheating makes you win more easily, but there's also a risk to that. It's actually right, though. Oh, no, there, there's a lot of people that um, there's a lot of people that are going to disagree. They're going to have their way of the way, that, you know, how, how they, how they want to look at things. That, that's fine. But um, to me, this is just what I've always done, and I find it to be very successful. What are your thoughts on wanting things that you know is bad, like addictions, for example? Not always drugs, but gambling, etc.? Um, I, I found that the the best way to stop an addiction is to never start it. And I, I think that there are cases where you should just listen to what people tell you. And if like you see a bunch of pictures of people that are doing meth and they're tearing their skin off of their face, maybe you should really think about not doing it. Stop thinking you're special. Stop thinking you're going to be different. Don't do it. It's that simple. Mm. Now, since yeah, it, it, yeah, the best way to stop an addiction is to not start it. I think that a lot of people they get into being addicted to things. This is not always the case, and I think ph pharmaceutical drugs are an example of it not being the case. But many people get into things that are addictive, and they know that the thing is addictive whether it's gambling or drugs or alcohol. And then they're like, oh, how did this happen? Well, because you did it. And I think a lot of people have this mentality that they're cigarettes. Yeah, my mom was like this. It killed her. It was cigarettes. And it's like, guess what? If you can't beat it, that's what happens to you. It was so fucking, it was awful. I saw it happen. Yeah, sugar's an addiction too. Who says I'm not addicted to things? What does this have to do? So, yes, that doesn't make me wrong. Yeah, like, why are you turning this around on me? What are you taking it personally? I've never said that drinking soda is good. Drinking soda is not good. Most people that engage in things that are bad for them engage in those things because they made a conscious decision to do so that was their own choice. And I think that being able to acknowledge that is the first step to being able to take control over what you do. And if you can't do that, and you're spending all your fucking time blaming other people, blaming society, blaming advertising, blaming uh, you know the government, blaming the healthcare system, or something like that, uh, you're just never going to get anywhere. It's never going it, to. It, it, it's never going to matter.